We've talked about the defensemen and the forwards. Today, we address goaltending and what that contributed to the Islanders' success and lack of success this season. Plus, we examine the age factor. How did that figure in to what the Islanders did this past year? We've got that, plus our Islanders' birthday of the day and a whole lot more coming up on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the weekend edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast. So glad you could join us today and be part of the Locked On Islanders family. And Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, and that includes YouTube. So if you want to watch instead of just listen, check us out on YouTube. And new episodes, if you subscribe, will be in your inbox every day, Monday through Friday. If you've got something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to talk about on the show, feel free to send us an email. The email address, LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. If you leave your first name and where you're from, we are happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever it is that's on your mind. You can follow the show on Twitter at LockedOnIsles, and you can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news, notes, and happenings throughout the offseason. We've got the uh, draft lottery less than a week away. We've got the draft, free agency, trade rumors, contract negotiations, you name it. If it's Islanders related, we will discuss it here on the Locked On Islanders podcast in what promises to be a very busy an important offseason for this hockey team. So we've talked about the defense. We've talked about the forwards. How about the goaltending this year? What did the goaltending do for this team? And I think there were a few major developments when you look at goaltending this year. Number one is that Simeon Varlamov struggled because of a combination of illness, injury, and rust. And I think you you combine those three factors. I mean, he was hurt to start the season. If I recall correctly, he didn't play till the eighth or ninth game. And then because he didn't attend a full training camp and did not uh, really wasn't in game shape because he didn't attend training camp, Uh, and wasn't able to be healthy enough to get into shape during the preseason and training camp. He comes in a little rusty, and he comes in not in tip-top game shape. And then because Ilya Sorokin had been playing all the games early and playing well enough early, Varlamov essentially had to play himself into shape, and that showed. Early on in the season, he struggled until he was back to his normal, healthy self. And I think by the second half of the season, Varlamov was, you know, let's say by February, Varley was back to being Varley, and that no longer was an issue. Meanwhile, you know, you look at the numbers for Varlamov, by the end of the season, Still not up to his usual par. He had a 291 goals against average, a 911 save percentage. And worse yet, the team very rarely succeeded in scoring a lot of goals when he was in net. He ended up starting 29 games, playing in 31. And, you know, for a guy who was the number one guy last year, that was a big adjustment. But Ilya Sorokin. On the other hand, because Varlamov started the season off hurt, Sorokin was more or less handed the number one job. And the good news for the Islanders, Ilya Sorokin proved over the course of this season that he is a bona fide number one goalie in this league. 26, 18, 
and eight on the year, the 925 save percentage, the 2.40 goals against average. That's half a goal per game better than Varley's was, and seven shutouts on the season. And when you consider the fact that the Islanders as a team did not play as good defensively as they did a year ago and two years ago, uh, the numbers that both these goalies put up really aren't as bad as, you know, you look at Varlamov, okay, yeah, the numbers were disappointing. You look at Sorokin, the numbers were good, but not outstanding. And yet, when you think about how this team was playing in front of the two of them, uh, you got to even give them more credit than the numbers just initially indicate. And look, as a team, the Islanders fell to seventh in the league in goals against. Uh, last year, they were in the top two or three, I believe. Again, I think this had more to do with the team in front of them than it did with the two goaltenders that we saw uh, getting the majority of the starts. Now, due to injuries and illness, Corey Schneider did get in one game. He won it. So uh, Schneider doing a great job down in Bridgeport. And if you want to know more about that, you can check out yesterday's show as the Bridgeport Islanders did advance in their playoff series, moving on to the next round. But here's the thing. Uh, Goaltending was not the major reason why this Islanders team struggled. It just wasn't. And now you, you, you go from there. You, you sort of have to figure out what happens next. So the goaltending is there. Is there a chance they move on from Varley? That's something we'll discuss further as the offseason goes on. Uh, but right now there's one aspect I wanted to mention that really, I don't think we've discussed enough. Varlamov without question, and Ilya Sorokin mentioned this has helped Ilya Sorokin in his development because quite honestly, the fact that they're both Russian, the fact that you know, Sorokin was learning English. All of these factors play in. And I think it helped, definitely helped Sorokin's development speed up because Varlamov was there. He provided mentorship, leadership, uh, someone who could communicate with him well in Russian and help him acclimate to life in the New York metropolitan area. Don't underestimate, don't underestimate that value that Varlamov has had so far for Sorokin and that he may, if they keep him next year, continue to do that and add that value. So we've got more to discuss on today's show. We have the playoff schedule for round two for the Bridgeport Islanders. And we'll discuss the age factor and how that played in to the New York Islanders' success or failure this season. All that and more coming up on this episode of the Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Summer is coming, and with summer, you're going to need some food on the go. Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on family vacation. You just throw them in your bag or in your kids' backpacks. Make sure everybody has a bar so you're fueled for your summer adventure. And the best part about Built Bars, they're both healthy and delicious. No more sacrificing delicious food for health. With a Built Bar, you can have both and it's easy. All you have to do is go to Built.com and order now. All Built Bars and Puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means that you can eat healthy and actually enjoy doing it with Built Bar. Have you tried Built Puffs yet? Well, we're going crazy for puffs. They come in crazy flavors like banana cream pie and churro. Who doesn't want a protein bar that tastes like a churro? And they're only 140 calories. Look, most Built Bars contain only 130 calories, just 4 grams of sugar, and only 4 net carbs, but they pack 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar that has usually around 240 calories, 
30 grams of sugar and dozens of net carbs. Go to Built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com. Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen. Now for your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast, nightly recaps of every NHL game with analysis from our local experts. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. So let's talk about Bridgeport. We mentioned on yesterday's show, we broke down their exciting 2-1 to one overtime win in game two to sweep that best of three series against the Providence Bruins. Now they move on to the second round against the Charlotte Checkers in the Atlantic Division semifinals. They are off until Tuesday. So the first two games of this series, and it's a best three out of five, are in Bridgeport. So Tuesday, 7 o'clock p.m. at Bridgeport, game one. Game two, Thursday, May 12th, also in Bridgeport, 7 o'clock start. And then game three, Saturday, May 14th, down in Charlotte. Game four, if necessary, Monday, May 16th in Charlotte. And game five, if necessary, is Wednesday, May 18th in Charlotte. And we will have a little more of a preview of this series Coming up, but if you go to BridgeportIslanders.com, if you want ticket information, you can check it out there. But the Bridgeport Islanders guaranteed at least another three games, maybe five. And if they win the series, they move on. And look, the Charlotte Checkers, the next team up, the affiliate of the Florida Panthers, should be a good series. And hopefully one the Islanders can continue to be competitive in and do well, but again, win, lose, or draw, more experience for the Bridgeport Islanders and those young players, and that's something they need going forward. Having that there will only help the Islanders. Wanted to talk a little bit about age, and I think age was a factor for this Islanders team. The Islanders had the oldest average roster in the NHL this year. The average player on the Islanders, 30.1 years old. And there were 11 Islander players who were over 30 this year. You go down this list, Josh Bailey, 32. Zdeno Chara, now 45, 44 when the season started. Casey Zizekas, 30. Cal Clutterbuck, 34. Andy Green, 39. Anders Lee, 31. Matt Martin, 32. Brock Nelson, 30. Kyle Palmieri, 30. Zach Parise, 37. And Simeon Varlamov, 33. Now, those are their ages at the beginning of the season. Some of these guys are older now uh, by a year, obviously. But when you add it all up, you've got a roster that is just older. And when you look at the NHL, and the importance in the modern game of speed and of, you know, getting to loose pucks and winning 50-50 battles, when you add the fact that older players are more susceptible to injuries and that when they do get injured, it takes them longer to recover from those injuries. and, And then you can add in another factor that I think affected this team. Over the last two years, between COVID and the two long playoff runs that they made, the Islanders' older players, a lot of them played a lot more hockey than a lot of the other teams in the NHL. So what does that mean? It means that there was a fatigue factor on some of these players. How much that affected the Islanders? I think the fatigue factor had a little bit to do with it. The injury factor, a little bit to do with it. I think the age and lack of team speed factor had a little bit more to do with it. And you get a situation where, look, the whole fourth line, the identity line, which has been so good, they all looked at, not all the time, but overall during the season, they looked a step slow. 
They looked like they were missing something. Obviously, the lack of mobility of a Zidane Chara had an effect on this defense and transition game. Uh, you know, it affected some players more than others. I don't think it affected Zach Parise so much in the fact that Parise was always hustling out there and giving his all. But again, the lack of speed, the lack of ability to consistently take the punishment that it was involved in the first 82 game season in three years. Uh, overall, these are things that I think had something to do with the disappointing season the Islanders had this year. Was it exclusively, you know, or the main reason for this team's struggles? No, not even close. I don't even think that, you know, the age of the roster had anything to do with how many COVID cases this team came down with. But at the end of the day, team speed or a lack thereof, both on defense and among forwards, was a factor. And the team's age overall was one of the reasons they lacked a lot of team speed. So you put it all together, and these are factors that certainly did come into play. And, you know, you add injuries, Pulak missing time, Clutterbuck, Mayfield, a lot of guys miss significant time. We talked about Varley. You put all of this together, the COVID, the road trip, the injuries, the lack of team speed, the lack of mobility on defense, all of these things combined help sink what was once considered a very promising 2021 22 campaign. And I'll add one more factor that, again, I don't think was a big factor, but I think it contributed a little bit. Moving to a new home to a new arena where the home team is really not that much more familiar, at least initially, with the way the rink works than the road team. You know, one of the home ice advantages that any NHL team enjoys is knowing how the puck is going to play when you hit it off the boards, what kind of carom it's going to take off the glass, where the stanchions are, uh, feeling comfortable in your own arena, in the locker rooms, in the just the routine that you come down with. Well, for the Islanders, the first 13 games were all on the road. Then after the first two or three home games, COVID ravages the roster and the, the players didn't even get to play in that arena all the time very much, let alone practice in it. You had the condensed schedule between the Olympic break, COVID, and everything else, there weren't as many practice dates. So you're not practicing at UBS Arena. You're not playing at UBS Arena. It took the team probably until January to have some kind of home ice advantage again. And that too, I think, had an effect on their poor performance this season. Hopefully, you know, that shouldn't be an issue going forward. And going forward, things should get better in that respect for this team. When we come back, we have our Islanders birthday of the day, a power forward who was with the team in the early 2000s. Let's see if you can guess who that is. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs, Major League Baseball, and this weekend's Run to the Roses as the Kentucky Derby is back. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. And uh, Saturday will be the 45th birthday of former Islanders winger Brad Isbister. Isbister, originally a third-round pick of the original Winnipeg Jets back in 1995. 6'4", 231. Just those are power-forward numbers. 
Never played for the Jets by the time he came into the league. They were the Phoenix Coyotes. Played uh, two seasons for the Coyotes and then joined the Islanders for 1999-2000. That was his most productive year with the Isles. 22 goals, 42 points, and 100 penalty minutes in just 64 games. Went two more seasons with the Isles scoring 35 total goals in those complete seasons and then was traded at the trade deadline in 2002-2003 to the Edmonton Oilers. Spent time with Edmonton, Boston, and then briefly with the Rangers and Canucks before closing out his career in Switzerland. Basically, Brad Bister played in 541 NHL games, 106 goals, 222 points, 615 penalty minutes, and two of those uh, seasons that he had with the Islanders, he played three complete seasons. He had more than 100 penalty minutes in two of the three, add a goal, three points in 18 playoff games, Uh, some of those with the Islanders as well, and you get uh, Brad Isbister's career. He wasn't afraid to be physical. He was solid, and he could put the puck in the net. Not a prolific goal scorer, but a good goal scorer, someone who's going to get you between 15 and 23 or so goals in a season. We're going to look back at one of Brad Isbister's better games with the Islanders. We take you to January 26, 2001 at Madison Square Garden. Islanders and Rangers going at it. Wade Flaherty, the goalie for your New York Islanders, Mike Richter, in between the pipes for the Rangers. In the first period, the Islanders got on the board first. Marius Tchaikovsky, his 17th from our Islanders' birthday of the day. Brad is Mr. and Taylor Pyatt, 459 into the game. Islanders up one to nothing. But the Rangers tied it late in the first period. Jeff Toms potted his third. Rich Pilon, the ex-Islander, and Brian Leach with the assist. At 1346, all even at one after one in the second period, no scoring. So we still tied at one heading into the final period. And that's when our Islanders birthday of the day, Brad Isbister caught fire with Kim Janssen in the box for closing his hand on the puck. Isbister tallies on the power play, his 15th, Jason Blake and Gary Galley with the assist at 750. And then At 17.09, Isbister strikes again his 16th from Marius Tchaikovsky and Roman Hammerlick. That made it 3-1 Islanders, a late power play goal with Gary Galley in the box for slashing. Radek Dvorak pulls the Rangers to within 3-2 with 32 seconds left. Peter Nedved and Theo Fleury with the assist, but basically Wade Flaherty closed the door after that. He made 32 saves in the win. And the Islanders beat the Rangers at Madison Square Garden 3-2. to two. Our Islanders' birthday of the day, Brad Isbister in on all three Islanders' goals. He scored two, set up the other. He was a plus two. He tied for the team lead with five shots on goal, along with Roman Hammerlick and Dave Scatcherd. And, of course, he netted the game-winning goal. So, uh, once again, We're a day early, but a very happy 45th birthday for former Islanders winger Brad Isbister. The uh, Edmonton, Alberta native is our Islanders birthday of the day. So we've got a lot to discuss on the show next week. We will be talking a little bit about the draft lottery, which is coming up fast. What it's going to mean for the Islanders. How much can they move up in the draft? We will talk about our player evaluations, and they are going to start on Monday as we go player by player through this roster, talk about the player's performance last year, where they fit in in the future with this team, whether they a disappointment, were they exceeding expectations, and why. So we will start that. We will take a player a day while we get through the roster. Some of the players who will maybe only played a game or two, we make do two or three players in one day or one show when we do that. But we will have all of that for you throughout next week and beyond. 
And of course, we'll also keep track of the Bridgeport Islanders as they begin their playoff run. Thanks again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked On NHL. From first round matchups to each Stanley Cup kiss, Locked On NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.